Look at this pathetic excuse of a tripod. Not only do I have green tape that kind of goes around here and wedges it so this top section will stay up, I have green tape actually holding it together because the seam in the plastic is split over time. Half of these little legs no longer go up and down, or if they go halfway up and down, and then when you lock it, then they fall over, so your camera falls over. Uh, I mean, the head on it. Have you ever seen those really cool panning shots where you see me working, I'm talking to the camera, and then it pans down to my hands, intricately working well? Well, I need to admit to you, that wasn't on purpose. The head doesn't really work well when you zoom out because the lens goes out of the glass holes up there so the weight's out here and it just kind of pans on its own. I mean, I will actually put green tape, wrap it around here and go to the top of the camera to lock it in when I have it zoomed in out. I mean, I will admit the, the, to you, for I probably paid $39 for this eight or nine years ago when I first started my YouTube channel. This is the only tripod I've been using. It's time to upgrade it. And we're going to upgrade it on a very low budget. So today, follow along as I make a camera stand out of just a piece of metal pipe. I clamped or bolted down. A few $7 casters I bought at Home Depot on special. And a piece of glue lamp. So for about, you know, $18, $30, and something you find in the dumpster diving, I'm going to have a really nice camera stand. It's going to be a very simple build, so if you want to follow along, here we go. Okay guys, now this really is just an overly pretentious build video. I mean, if you want the cliff notes, attach the three casters to the bottom of a heavy board and screw a pipe flange on top. Then you can just attach the pipe and there's your camera stand. This entire video is just describing that. So, if that's what you're trying to learn, hey, can't someone just go out to the shop and get it done? But, you know, me being a YouTuber, I've got to make it overly glossy and overly complex. So right here, I'm cutting out a piece of glue lamb on a bandsaw to a diagram of a equilateral triangle that's been kind of ballooned out. Uh, if you want a overly complex reasoning for that one, hey, ballooning out a triangle when you got three casters, you'll kind of centralize a mass in the middle of those casters by st but still maximizing that mass. Or, I just thought it looked cool. And because you got a nice YouTube build video, you need really cool B-roll of attaching spade bits to your drill. Like really, anybody needs to see how to do that. Or, how about we lay out the tools with nice squares so that we know we are going to be drilling a perfectly plumb hole and then film yourself not following those angles so your hole is out of plumb anyways. Then, how about we show ourselves using a sander, like high skilled woodworking. The only thing you could say right here is just don't sand in the same direction all the time so you don't make a wallered out section. But, in reality, I have you watching somebody sanding a board right now and how about we add in a quick action shot with the router now in all seriousness i am utilizing a leftover piece of glue lamp i had when i built a dozen workbenches and i don't think this product gets talked about enough it's a construction industry product where they basically laminate 2x4s, 2x6s, 8s, or 12s together so you can buy some huge slabs of wood that are 6, 8, 12 inches thick. 6 inches is perfect for bench tops. In fact, that's what I used to build those 12 workbenches. And it's incredibly inexpensive. I want to say that those 2 foot by 9 foot long workbenches were less than 200 bucks made of southern yellow pine. So if you have a project that needs a really thick slab, at least look into industrial glue lamp material. Now you can attach anything you want to this pipe, like lights. I'm going to attach this little articulating camera arm stand that I've had for years but have never really used. Well, that was kind of fun. A quick down and dirty build. Really, I didn't even have to do bandsaw work. I could just drill a hole and drove those wheels on it and have been done with it but dressed it up a little bit and I probably spent maybe an hour hour and a half even while filming on it but just playing around here 
I can tell this is going to be a game changer for me because I can now get those overhead shots. I can zoom in really close. I can do stuff that I couldn't do with my tripod because no matter how it was configured with that triangle and the feet, it, the camera was always a distance away. So I'm kind of excited. Let's see what the creative juices come up with now. And if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. Like, favorite, subscribe. Do all those social medias. Tell your friends. Visit my website, WorthEffort.com, where not only do I write a blog, I sell a lot of my own artwork and swag and stuff like that. But I want you to all to remember one last thing, that it is always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.